What is up you guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Mackenzie. If you're not new, thank you for coming back. So, if you guys have watched my last couple videos and you heard me mention, I picked up a new workbook from Amazon. So, this one is called Terrariums and Planters, Full Size Patterns for 30 Stained Glass Plant Containers. So, this is what we're going to be working out of today. If you didn't pick it up already, of course, I'll have it linked down in the description box below. So, I know some of you guys are going to be upset about this. Some of you guys will be happy, but we're starting simple. You guys saw the thumbnail and the title. We're going to start with just a basic terrarium planter, and we're going to work our way up to the more intricate designs that you see in this book. So some of those intricate designs that you see in this book are not only massive, but they're very difficult in the sense of how you have to put them together, the rigs that you have to create to put them together. So we're gonna start very simple and we'll work our way up to those more difficult projects, I promise. So just stick with me. But for today, we're making the tabletop planter. So if that sounds like something you're into, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so let's just take a quick look at our new book here, Terrariums and Planters, again by Randy Wardell. Full size patterns for 30 stained glass plant containers. So we can open right up to page 10 and 11 and you can see right here project number one tabletop planter and right on page 11 is our stencil so we are going to be changing a few things about this design if you don't want to do that you can absolutely just follow their suggestions i'll tell you what i'm going to change in a second but you can see over here project number one it tells you what amount of glass to expect to use it tells you a little bit about the size of the piece and just some special instructions but again we're not paying attention to those because of the things that I am going to change about the design. So again, over on page 11, we've got our stencil here. And right here, this pyramid section, project number one, cut three glass and leave three spaces open. That's the first thing I'm gonna change. So I don't wanna leave three spaces open. I want it to be almost completely enclosed and we're going to leave one space open. So instead of cutting three, we're going to cut five. Number two, the second thing I'm gonna change is the type of glass I'm gonna be using. So I don't wanna use multiple colors of glass. I wanna use one color. I'm gonna use a textured, clear, iridescent glass. But of course, if you guys wanna use multiple, then absolutely go ahead and do that. You can use two, you can use three, or you can use one just like me. So I'm gonna use one color of glass. I'm going to leave one space open. So we're gonna cut five instead of three. And over here on our planter bottom, we're going to drill drainage holes. Plants need drainage. You cannot stick a plant inside a container that doesn't have any drainage holes. That's asking for root rot. Your plant is not going to thrive. It's going to struggle. So we're going to drill drainage holes. So again, the things that I'm changing. So number one, I'm using one color of glass. Number two, I'm going to cut five instead of three. Number three, we're going to drill drainage holes and we're going to seal it with a silicone caulking. So with all that being said, unfortunately, project number one doesn't have any directions. There are no references, there are no directions specifically on how to put this piece together. So at the beginning of this book, there are basic directions on more intricate tape jigs and assembly jigs for putting pieces together that can sit flat. So that's the problem. Number one, our tabletop planter doesn't sit flat. Those bottom pieces are at an angle. So you can't really set up a classic tape or tabletop jig to put these together. But because of that, once we've got our stencil out of this book, we can just put this book right to the side. So if you wanna use this actual page, you can absolutely do that. Just be aware there is a design on the back. So as long as you're okay with not using that, you can just use this exact paper. But if you've got a scanner, definitely scan it and print out a copy. That way you can have a completely separate stencil. So I've already printed mine out, laminated them and cut them out. So I've got a completely separate stencil and I get to keep the original page and the design on the back. But again, if you don't have a scanner, you can absolutely use this page. That's totally fine. So with that being said, we've got our stencils ready to go. Let's just start cutting out some glass. Okay, so I've got my glass picked out. We've got our stencil pieces ready to go. All we've got to do is trace them all out and cut them out. Thank you. 
Okay guys, so everything is cut. They are ready to go. So we want to grind all of the edges of all of our glass just as normal. But like I said, we're also going to put some holes in the base of our planter. So I'm going to drill three drainage holes with the whole bit, which again, you guys will see in a second. If you have any questions about specific different kinds of bits, again, I'll link my video down below going over a bunch of different types of grinder bits. So let's get to grinding. Alrighty guys, so we've got our glass nice and clean. I dunked it into two water buckets, then took it to the sink to give it its final last rinse. So everything is nice and clean. Now all we have to do is wrap it in copper foil. So I've got all of my tools here, the basic tools that I use wrapping copper foil, which is tweezers, scissors, my SS roller, which I've mentioned before, I absolutely love this thing. And my burnishing tool, which you guys know is just a wooden handled paintbrush. And of course my copper foil and my 3D printed stand from one of you guys, which is absolutely awesome. Awesome. Again, we're going to just wrap everything in copper foil. If you guys have any particular questions on any specific step in stained glass, like grinding, wrapping, etc., I have dedicated videos for every step in stained glass on my channel already. I will link my stained glass playlist below, so go check it out if you have any specific questions. So again, right now we're just going to quickly get all of these pieces wrapped. I'm going to use a quarter inch black backed copper foil. I'm using quarter inch because I want it to be a little bit thicker and this glass is textured. So that's what I'm gonna use, quarter inch black back, but use anything you guys want. Alrighty guys, so we've got our glass ready to go. Everything is wrapped in copper foil. I've got my soldering mat out. I've got my Hakko FX601 soldering iron and I've got my Hakko FA400 smoke absorber with the arm ready to go. So I've got 60-40 solder, a couple rods cut right here. My backup roll, I've got my needle nose pliers because I use these all the time when actually soldering and making pieces. I've got my flux, my flux brush. My flux is always going to be Novacan. If Novacan makes something, I'm going to want it in that brand. I just enjoy it. If you guys are ever curious about what all of my most used or top favorite products are, from now on, I'm always going to have them linked in my description. So things like my soldering iron, my soldering mat right here, everything is from Amazon. So I'll have links to all of my favorite tools and products down below. Again, we've got everything wrapped in copper foil. My soldering iron has been heating up. So first thing I'm gonna do is wipe off this old solder and I'm going to coat it in nice fresh solder and we can start putting this thing together. So like I mentioned earlier, unfortunately this project, project number one, doesn't have any specific directions on how to actually put this piece together. No, it's not that difficult, but if you're a beginner, it does get overwhelming and it makes it difficult to try to figure out how to put something together on your own because you're already overwhelmed at the fact that there are no directions. So take a deep breath, it's gonna be super easy and because we already have the design laid out for us, that's gonna show us how we need to put it together. So. What I mean by that, normally, if you're putting together a 3D piece, let's say that these had to connect together at a 90 degree angle. That would be our guide, making that 90 degree angle. Does that make sense? But because these pieces are sitting at an outward angle, like this, our only guide is going to be the next piece. So they're not gonna sit outwards like this. They're not gonna sit too far inwards and over cross. These edges have to come perfectly together. So when we have them up against the bottom, bring them up until they perfectly touch. That's going to be our guide for our angle. Does that make sense? So having these next to each other in those corners meeting perfectly tells us our angle. And again, we can't use any type of tabletop or electrical tape jig to do this. So we're going to have to kind of just use 
use all of our fingers, hold things in place and tack solder and just get it done as quickly as we can. So again, this is common sense stuff, but when you're first starting, it can feel so overwhelming that normal process of elimination or normal problem solving becomes a lot more difficult because you're already so overwhelmed. So let's start tack soldering all these pieces together. Again, I've got my Novacan liquid flux. I do not like gel flux. I don't like paste flux. I feel like it's yucky, nasty, and just leaves gross residue. So I've got my flux brush and I'm just going to lightly coat these three edges with flux. We don't need a ton of it, just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is take my rod here, my solder rod, and I'm gonna bend it like this. Did you see how I did that? So I'm just bending it so it can stand on its own, right? So this tip is off the ground. Then I can use both of my hands on the glass or one hand on my soldering iron and I can come and pick up beads without it being flat on the table. Does that make sense? So what I'm gonna do is pick up these first two angles nice and gently. I'm not pushing super hard anywhere. We don't want anything to move, so I'm just going to lightly hold these pieces together Get my soldering iron, pick up that bead, and let's tack solder that first corner in place. Easy peasy, right? So we've already got that top tack soldered in place, and already it's standing up on its own. But that's not good enough. We need to tack solder in a couple more places, so let's go down to the bottom here. Let's tack solder this corner. And again, we're just holding it very gently. We don't wanna push the glass away from each other. We're just tack soldering everything in place. And then I'm gonna drop one more bead halfway down and really give that solder a second to kind of melt in there and make connection with both of those copper foil edges. Same thing on this side. And if we want to, we can drop one more bead halfway up that angled side. All right, now that's pretty sturdy, sturdy as far as tack soldering goes. Let's move on to the next edge. So all we're doing is just meeting these corners everywhere, easy peasy. So let's hold that next piece up and we're just lightly holding it. We're gonna hit it with flux, that top corner, and we're gonna drop a bead, tack soldering it in place. Now we can let go. So what I'm gonna do now is go down to this bottom section and we're gonna drop a bead down there. Easy peasy. Now again, we've got another piece tack soldered and we're just gonna keep moving on. Okay, cool. So we've got our base already done. Everything fit together perfectly. If you get to that last piece and it doesn't fit correctly, you've got to take it back to the grinder, grind it down, or recut a new piece. You want everything to fit as close to perfect as you can get it. So before we move on, we need to finish soldering all of these inside seams just to make it a little bit easier. Because again, we changed this design to only have one opening on the front. So it's going to be really difficult to try to soldering solder all of these inside seams once our top pieces are on. So let's get that done first. Okay, so we've got our last side wall on. Everything on the inside is soldered, and I did do more than just tinning. I really don't ever like to just tin or even just lightly coat. I do prefer to build up a bigger bead whenever I can. I just think it looks more finished. So we've got everything just about done. The last thing we gotta do, guys, is just solder all of our outside edges, which you guys know how to do. It's just a very basic tinning. We're gonna tin this area first. Then I'm gonna build up the bead and then we're just gonna normally build the bead everywhere else. And I can't decide, do we want this to be hanging or do we want it to be a tabletop? I suppose I'll show you guys how I would attach a jump ring to the top and I'll put a jump ring on the top just in case you guys want it to. Either way, we've gotta solder all of these edges, finish it up and then we'll smack a jump ring on the top and we'll get this thing patinaed. Okay. 
Okay, we are completely done soldering our piece and it came out pretty friggin' cute, I must admit, and it's big. This is a good size planter. I think what I'm going to do is probably put something like a basic, I don't know, golden pothos or maybe philodendron Brazil inside here. That way it can really kind of overflow and take over this opening. Okay, so anyways, let's get a jump ring soldered onto the top and add some chain because we've got five walls. This thing is structurally sound. I'm not too worried about it. We're gonna put a very big jump ring on the top and hang it with some chain. So how we're going to at attach the jump ring. So I've got some pretty big jump rings. These are probably like 14 millimeter or something. And I'm going to put the chain through the jump ring and I'm gonna put my hanging jump ring on the other side as well, just so we can solder it closed when it's done. Now, I'm gonna take my jump ring, right? And here is the opening up at the top, right? We wanna solder that closed. So I'm gonna put my pliers on the other side, kind of roll it down. I'm gonna hang the chain over the top, switch hands. So we've got the chain out of the way. We've got the jump ring opening down here and we've got a nice firm grip at the top. So what I'm gonna do is rest it on the top of our piece. We're going to generously coat that jump ring and the top of our piece with flux. Now we're gonna pick up a bead of solder and drop it inside. And we wanna completely encase that jump ring with solder. So we're just gonna keep picking up beads and dropping it in. And now I'm gonna pick it up and start building the bead up on the side. So you guys can see now what that looks like. So we've got our main bead down at the bottom, holding it in place. Now we're gonna build up the beads all along the side. So I'm just gonna hold it on its side here and start building those beads up along the side. Cause we just really wanna make sure that number one, this jump ring is completely enclosed, but two, it's strong enough. Again, we're working with a pretty good sized piece here. It's got a lot of solder on it. It's got some weight to it. All right, now take a look at this. See how different that looks? That jump ring is completely encased and enclosed inside that solder. We built up all those edges nice and thick. That is sturdy. I'm concerned that this chain is not thick enough, so we're gonna go up and we're going to make this chain even thicker. We've got our new heavy, heavy duty chain attached and ready to go. Now let's attach our top jump ring and we're going to solder this closed as well. That way it cannot rip open. And I'm just gonna drop a small bead on it and solder it closed. It doesn't matter that the solder is silver and the jump ring is black because we're gonna patina it all anyway, so hey, that jump ring is not gonna open. Yeah, that chain feels much, much better. That other chain was definitely not strong enough. This is a pretty damn big piece. I'm surprised with how big they are. I said that at the beginning of the video too, though. I'm shocked with how big some of the planters are in this book. Like some of them get massive and we'll make some of them coming up, but beware they are big. It's like, who the hell is hanging a friggin' two foot wide stained glass planter in their house? <laughs> All right, let's get this cleaned up and get this thing patinaed. Okay, so I just gave my piece a nice warm water, soapy, scrubby bath, so she's clean and ready for patina. So as always, guys, I'm gonna be using Novacan brand black patina. Now, like I always say, follow directions. Right on the front of the bottle, it says poison, causes severe burns, vapor harmful. Number one, you don't wanna breathe this stuff in. Number two, if you don't got two inch nails and you're going to come in contact with it, wear gloves. This stuff can hurt you. That's why there's a huge poison warning label on the front. Follow directions and you'll be okay. Like I said, Novacan black patina. We're gonna patina our entire piece and then bring it again to the sink. Give it a good, nice, warm water, soapy scrub and then she'll be done. But to finish it off, if we're gonna put soil inside it, we do have to clear silicone caulking down around the edges. So we will do that once we have it patinaed. So let's get it patinaed and washed again. Alrighty guys, we are almost done. We gave our piece its final bath, making sure to really rinse out the inside well. We don't want any leftover soap or chemical materials on the inside because there is going to be a living plant inside of there. So before we put our soil and plant inside of it, we have to seal those inside seams with some type of caulking. So I've got white, I've got clear, but I didn't want you guys to have to also purchase a caulking gun and all of that stuff. So I picked up something even easier from Amazon. This is DAP Ultra Clear. Now 
Now this is essentially the same thing. It's a flexible all-purpose waterproof sealer and it stays crystal clear, which I absolutely love. And the best part is, we've got this cap. So all you gotta do is trim off the top and you've got a cap to put right back on afterwards. I love the ease of this. You can get it from Amazon or from Home Depot. Of course, I'll have everything linked down below. So, DAP Ultra Clear, that's what this step is called. So all we're gonna have to do is pop this cap off. We're gonna trim this at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna keep it pretty small and we're just going to seal that bottom inside edge. This bottom inside edge right here is what we're going to hit with this sealant. All right, and for this last edge, I'm gonna use a paintbrush because I can't really get in there well with this tool. So I'm just gonna grab a flat edged paintbrush and I'm going to use this to hit that last seam. Alrighty, and because we already ruined a paintbrush using silicone sealer on it, I'm just gonna use this paintbrush and clean up all those edges. All right, and that's what she's looking like. You can barely see it. You would be able to see it a lot easier if it was white caulking, of course. But what I did is essentially just covered that entire edge in the caulking or the silicone sealer. And I used this paintbrush just like you would your finger. So say you're actually caulking the edge of a tub, you know how you take your finger to kind of smooth it out and make that perfectly curved edge. I'm using the paintbrush the same way you would use your finger in that sense. And it's ready to go. And because it's clear, it looks totally fine on the edges. You can't even really tell. It's crystal, crystal clear. And once it's dry, you won't be able to see it at all. I'm gonna put our cap back on and save this for another day. Love this stuff. It's sealed, it's ready to go. So we're gonna let that dry. And once it's completely dry, we will put our plant in soil inside of it and take a look at our final piece. Okay, so it is 24 hours later and it took a full 24 hours for this silicone stuff to dry, but it is completely dry now and ready to go. So I've been kind of debating on what plant I wanna put in here. At first, I want to instinctively put in something like an air plant, and then I was thinking, all right, maybe I just do philodendron micans because that does tend to stay a little bit more compact and smaller versus like golden pothos or the philodendron brazil like I had mentioned earlier. It's just going to get too big for this space. So then I remembered I've got this guy right here who is overgrowing its current home. So I think we're going to take it out of here and we're just going to put him in our new planter. I've got a basic store-bought cactus potting mix. I'm gonna mix in some orchid bark and some perlite. And that should be perfect for our little soil mix. So I'm just going to throw that soil in here, transplant our plant, and then we'll take a look at our final piece when it's hanging up. 